Hello, my name is Matthew Mercer. I'm a voice actor and the Dungeon Master for Geek and Sundry's Critical Role, and welcome to my fun little video series about tips and tricks for Game Masters and Dungeon Masters. Today, we're talking about social non-combat encounters. I guess first to start with that, not all battles are fought with weapons. Uh, I think combat's great, it's a lot of fun, but there's a lot to be had in many games about social combat and the dynamics in how you deal with non-player characters in either a political or a tense uh, social setting. First and foremost, creative ways you can incorporate this into your game. Social events like balls, or council meetings, or diplomatic missions, or consider spy games if you're playing like a heavy intrigue type uh, RPG. Uh, interrogations, investigations, these are all things that are challenges and encounters in their own right, there just aren't hit points involved per se and you know, to hit modifiers. One thing you want to consider when you decide what type of non-combat social encounter it is, what is the overall goal of this social encounter? Uh, you know, be very clear with the players what they're supposed to be trying to achieve as part of this encounter. Otherwise, it can tend to meander a bit and get confusing. So, as long as they're the NPCs that put them on this mission or the circumstances that lead them to this encounter is very clear as to what the goal is, that uh, helps the players number one feel more comfortable in the environment. Two helps that when they converse with the NPCs and try and pry information or discover secrets, they know exactly what to look for and what not to say. And three, it helps your preparation be a little more direct so you don't end up having to be a little too lost amongst 300 non-player characters that you weren't expecting to use. But in that note too, you definitely wanna make sure that the NPCs that are involved in these encounters are pretty well fleshed out. You understand them, you know what their goals, their perspectives, their needs, their fears are, um, and what they're looking to get out of this and what they don't want to be found. Um, so you know, definitely flesh them out to a degree where you'd feel comfortable getting into a conversation with the, with the player characters. Keep a list of key information that each NPC may know that pertains to this circumstance, and uh, mark which NPCs are willing or unwilling to share this information. Some may want to sell the information at the right price, some might need less soft methods to get it out of them, but definitely keep note of kind of how important this information is to each NPC and how willing they are to give it up, per se. Also, if there are different factions involved in this social encounter, uh, make sure that you uh, you note which NPCs are involved with which faction or which guild or whichever uh, various political circles are involved in this encounter as well. It could be, especially if it's like a, like a large gathering of different political avenues, those always go well. Those don't get weird or awkward at all. And that'll allow you to, uh, to draw those lines socially and the players can play sides if they want to or play them against each other. It's kind of cool. You may even have players choose a side or choose multiple sides if they're very careful and you know aren't discovered as a double or triple or quadruple agent. That also always ends well, if Hollywood has taught me anything. Another thing to consider, raising the stakes. You know, if you're in a party and you're just, you know, talking, getting information, and you leave, you're like, we got the information, yay. That's fun, but it's kind of stagnant and stays kind of level. Find moments or points in the story where you can kind of up the ante and raise the tension. Uh, things like, imagine an NPC that you thought was dead suddenly shows up, and you can't go and attack them immediately because you're in the middle of a very, very tense social environment. Or envision how uh, someone who's at the party that had the information you're looking for suddenly disappears and they're found dead in one of the nearby rooms without a murder weapon, and now it turns into a classic whodunit, which is always fun, no matter what genre or time period you're playing. Uh, you know, and also consider how can these events uh, and outcomes affect the world at large? You know, these little conversations may have a very big impact on how the story and combat outside and for the rest of the story may happen and occur, so don't be afraid to think of the long-reaching kind of repercussions of how the players act in this environment. Stolen objects work well. Finding a hidden spy is always cool. Someone who's like, you know, uh, using information uh, against the party that you discover. And once again, like you have to find that fine line between sneaking off and doing dirty, dark stuff in a hallway and then have to act nice James Bond style in the middle of the environment. It's always a fun dynamic. Also, there are other things you can incorporate in this that are non-combat based encounters, not just social encounters, but non-combat. Things like an infiltration and a theft, trying to steal something or an important object from a museum, you know, that in itself may lead to battle, and many of these may still lead to battle, but uh, doesn't have to, and that's just a series of skill checks and challenges. You can put traps and dangers in the way, uh, but it can feel as tense and as cool as battle without having to actually do battle. Also things like running a gauntlet or having a contest of skill that the player has to go ahead and prove themselves to a certain faction. Those are cool challenges and encounters that don't necessarily involve combat or a mat or miniatures, 
um, but you can still build the same tension, the same stakes in those as well. But do keep in mind and be ready for it. Many social and non-combat encounters can very quickly become combat encounters. If player actions have taught me anything in previous games, uh, you should know what I mean. So when you create one of these, definitely have in your back pocket some idea of how combat would work if a fight were to break out and who would be involved, uh, just to be prepared, because uh, it's probably gonna happen. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been somewhat helpful or useful for your uh, GMing and DMing pleasure. Uh, you can check out more episodes of this on geekandsundry.com, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys soon in one way or the other.